Hello, today we will look at Invocana, and this is a trade name of Canagliflozin. And in order to remember that Canagliflozin has a trade name of Invocana, I try to focus on the C in Canagliflozin and the K in Invocana. And in this way, I remember that the trade name of Canagliflozin has a K sounding letter in it, and Canagliflozin belongs to the family of SGLT2 inhibitors, as we know. And this group of medications contain Ertugliflozin, Dapagliflozin, Empagliflozin, and this Canagliflozin. SGLT2 inhibitors inhibit a molecule called SGLT2, and this is an abbreviation of sodium glucose co-transporter 2. And this tr transporter molecule is found on proximal tubers of the kidneys, which usually reabsorbs about 90% of the filtered glucose. SGLT2 inhibitors will inhibit this molecule and this means that the glucose will now instead be excreted through the kidneys into the urine and this is what we call glucosuria, meaning glucose in the urine. So canagliflozin and the SGLT2 inhibitors in general are good for patients with atherosclerosis, cardiovascular disease, heart failure and diabetic kidney disease patients and also in obesity actually. So today we will deal with canagliflozin, which has the trade name once again of Invocana. So Invocana can be given as 100 milligram or 300 milligram tablets before the first meal of the day. And we usually start with 100 milligram dose once daily. And the maximum dose of canagliflozin is 300 milligram once daily. And when we start with the 100 milligram dose, we need to give this dose for at least four weeks until we can increase the dose up to 300 milligram once daily, but only if necessary. Canagliflozin is usually not recommended in patients with severe liver insufficiency, with a child PUC class C or above, because we have four classes of liver insufficiency based on this child PUC classification, A, B, C, and D. And we're not allowed to give Ertugliflozin or Canagliflozin in patients with class C or D, Dapagliflozin and empagliflozin, on the other hand, have shown actually very good results in patients with severe liver insufficiency. So therefore, they can be used. And it is also not recommended to start canagliflozin in patients with severe kidney insufficiency with a GFR of less than 30 milliliter per minute. But if the patient is already taking a dose of 100 milligram once daily, it actually can be continued for some patients. And this is something that the doctor has to decide depending on the patient. And where we have a GFR of more than 60 milliliter, then we can give this maximum dose of 300 milligram once daily. When the GFR is between 30 to 60 milliliter per minute, then it is recommended to give only 100 milligram once daily. And it is important to remember that SGLT2 inhibitors can be given in patients without diabetes also. We already mentioned, for example, that canagliflozin is good for patients with atherosclerosis or heart failure or diabetic kidney disease. So canagliflozin is actually reducing the major adverse cardiovascular events in these patients and also in diabetes type 2 patients with atherosclerosis. What I mean with major adverse cardiovascular events are, for example, stroke or myocardial infarction, for example. Canagliflozin is also good for diabetic kidney disease, as we said, which can be indicated by a urinary albumin excretion of more than 300 mg per day. And this means that we have an excretion of more than 300 mg of albumin every day through the kidneys into the urine. And this is not normal. Kidneys should not excrete or secrete albumin or any other type of proteins into the urine. This actually usually indicates that the kidney glomerular membrane is destroyed and thereby the proteins are going through the damaged kidney instead of filtering them as it should. So it has been shown that canagliflozin is very good for these kind of patients with diabetic kidney disease. But it is important to remember that the dose of canagliflozin should not be more than 100 milligram once daily in these type of patients, since a higher dose will not increase the benefits. So this means that please don't give 300 milligram of canagliflozin for patients with diabetic kidney disease. In both 
of these cases, namely heart failure or diabetic kidney disease, we use Invocana, so canaglifrosin, only as a secondary agent. And this means that we have usually, uh, we usually give Invocana in combination with other medications for heart failure or other medications for diabetic kidney disease. And when it comes to diabetes, for example, we can also use Invocana as uh, alone, so a monotherapy, meaning that we use it completely alone or we combine it with, for example, metformin or insulin. And when we combine canagliflozin and metformin, there exists a tablet called Invocamet. And as you hear, there is a small difference here between Invocana and Invocamet. And the one containing met Formin has an ending of met, namely invoca met. And this is very convenient because instead of taking now two tablets a day, you will only have to take one tablet which contains both substances. And it is of course possible to give invocana and metformin uh, separately, but then the patient simply has to take two tablets a day. Okay, and therefore it is very important that you learn these combination tablets names, for example, Invocamet. Okay, before we start canaglifosin or any type of SGL2 inhibitor, it is very important also that we reduce the dose of insulin or sulfonylurea if the patient is already taking any of these two medications. And the reason is the risk of developing hypoglycemia which is a blood glucose level less than 60 milligram per deciliter. And it is also very important that we correct any type of hypovolemia if present, since SGLT2 inhibitors like canagliflozin can cause hypotension, which means a lower blood pressure. And due to, uh, to the increased water secretion that we see with these medications. Some other things that have to be considered before starting canagliflozin are, for example, the contraindications. The contraindications means that you are not allowed to start a certain medication due to th some things called contraindications. And as you hear, it's contra, meaning against the indications of starting the medication. Let's name the contraindications now of canagliflozin. These are type 1 diabetes, diabetic ketoacidosis, which is a pH of less than 7.35. Then we have hypotension, which is a blood pressure of less than 90 forward slash 60 millimeter mercury. And we have kidney insufficiency with a GFR of less than 30 milliliter per minute. Uh, then also uh, we have, for example, if the patient is already taking 100 milligram, then this dose can be continued, as we said. So depending on the doctor's decision, we said that earlier. Patients on dialysis, for example, with very severe kidney insufficiency are of course not allowed to be given canagliflozin, so don't do that. Surgery is another contraindication to canagliflozin where it is actually recommended to stop this medication three days before the surgery in canagliflozin in order to prevent ketoacidosis. Hospitals, hospital patients also in general are not recommended to take SGLT2 inhibitors uh, because it does not mean that all patients in hospitals are forbidden to take SGLT2 inhibitors. It uh, just means that most ill patients usually are in hospitals and usually get more side effects and more complications with SGLT2 inhibitors, statistically. And patients who are not so ill and are in hospital can usually take SGLT2 inhibitors without any problems. So if you're not so ill, you can take it. So these were the main contraindications of canagliflozin. And if you have excluded any of these contraindications, then you are allowed to start canagliflozin. And after you, after you start the initial dose of 100 mg of canagliflozin, then the side effects can happen. And side effects are usually very, very rare, but it is important to mention them since sometimes the medication has to be stopped in order to stop these side effects. So the side effects of canagliflozin are all very similar to the other SGLT2 inhibitors, namely hypoglycemia, which is a glucose level, as we said, less than 60 milligram per deciliter. And this usually happens only when given with medications like, for example, sulfonyluria or insulin. So therefore, it is important that we reduce the dose of insulin or sulfonylurea while taking these SGLT2 inhibitors in order to avoid hypoglycemia. 
Interestingly, the opposite happens in the urine. So namely that we have a lot of glucose in the urine, and this is called glucosuria. SGLT2 inhibitors, these SGLT2 inhibitors act on the proximal tubules of the kidneys and thereby they allow the glucose to be excreted through the urine. Uh, so SGLT2 co-transporter, this means that on one hand we have a reduced glucose in the blood due to this transporter and in the same time we have increased amount of glucose in the urine. So, since we have a lot of glucosuria also, meaning a lot of glucose in the urine, then urinary tract infections can happen because bacteria bacterias love glucose. So bacteria love this sugar and thereby they thrive in this environment. And the urinary tract is full of sugar and thereby these bacteria go there and make an infection. So, then we have side effects of hypovolemia, meaning a low blood pressure, as we said previously also. And uh, it is not only glucose which is secreted, but also water flows with it due to osmotic diuresis, we call it. And if you have a lot of water secreted through the kidneys, then the patient will go to the toilet more. And often this is called then polyuria, so more increased urination. So you lose a lot of water and this leads to hypotension, which is a lower blood pressure. And the natural reaction of the body is to increase the thirst, which means that the patient will start to drink a lot of water. And unfortunately, this is not the case in elderly patients who usually drink a very low amount of water. And as we know, blood is composed mostly of water and the water makes up the blood pressure in your body. So if an elderly patient is not drinking enough water and at the same time you are giving SGLT2 inhibitors that will secrete a lot of water through the kidneys, then blood pressure will simply drop. And this can cause dizziness that in turn can lead to patients falling down. And another thing that can happen if you're uh, losing a lot of water, for example, is that the concentration of hemoglobin will increase. And hemoglobin is the protein that is transporting oxygen in the blood. So if you take a blood sample of this patient taking SGLT2 inhibitors, you can many times see an increased concentration of hemoglobin. Okay, so let us go back now to the side effect of having a low blood pressure and this causing dizziness and thereby causing the elderly patient to fall down. What will happen now? So if the elderly patient are falling down, then the risk of bone fractures increase. So elderly patients usually also has osteoporosis, as we know, osteoporosis, which means thinning of the bones, and that increases the risk of bone fractures then further. So to make things even worse, we know that SGLT2 inhibitors, especially, especially canagliflozin, can reduce bone density in patients. And this all can lead to bone fractures. And canagliflozin has the highest risk of bone fractures out of the SGLT2 inhibitors. Canagliflozin also has the highest risk of diabetic ketoacidosis, which is a pH of less than 7.35. Canagliflozin also has the highest risk of amputations in patients with a lot of risk factors for amputations, namely peripheral vascular disease patients or neuropathy or foot deformity or any history of foot ulcers. In, but it is important to note here that amputations are extremely, extremely rare. So normal people should not be afraid of amputations. It is extremely rarely happening in people. And once again, with severe risk factors for peripheral vascular disease or neuropathy or foot deformity or any history of foot ulcers, then the risk can get worse. Three other side effects that are very general ones are, are for example, abdominal pain or constipation or lack of energy that we in medical terms call asthenia, lack of energy, asthenia. So this was a presentation about canagliflozin, which has a trade name of Invocana. And as we know, canagliflozin belongs to the family of SGLT2 inhibitors together with the other SGLT2 inhibitors, namely ertugliflozin, dapagliflozin, and empagliflozin. I thank you very much for listening and take care. Bye-bye.